we've talked a little bit about our power supply units and they have different connectors on the end. But now let's actually take a little bit of a closer look at the connectors themselves and learn how we can identify them and learn how we can tell the differences between our different connectors that we have on our motherboard as well as um, what they look like on our power supply unit. Our first connector that we're going to see that is the, probably one of our most obvious connectors is going to be our main power connector. Now this is the power connector which provides most of our power to the board and we'll see is our largest connector coming out, out of our power supply unit. This is typically either a 20 pin or a 24 pin connector and we have our black 20 pin connector on the right and we have our white 24 pin connector on the left. Now most of our newer boards are going to be use, using a 24 pin connector and we'll see with some of our power supply units they actually come with 20 plus 4 connectors. Now these 20 plus 4 connectors have those extra 4 pins sort of as breakoff pins from the standard 20 and if we need to just use a 20 pin connector we can just plug this one straight in or if we need that 20, full 24 pin connector we just use those additional 4 straight into the board. Now sometimes we'll run into a situation where we have a, say a 20 pin connector and we need a 24, or we have a 24 and we need a 20, um, and sometimes we can actually interchange those. Say if we have a 24 pin connector and we have a 20 pin board, we can actually place that 24 pin connector if the space considerations allow onto our 20 pin board. Um, we'll just need to keep in mind that we align our connector correctly in the socket so that it fits. Uh, we have a, a micro ATX board here, which actually uses our 20 pin connector. And we'll see that our connector for our main power is going to be this slightly transparent white connector here. Now using our 20 pin connector, we'll just go ahead and align that there. And we have a clip that once we place this firmly in, actually clips into place there. Now these connectors only go in one way because the, as we can see, we have the colored wires. They need to correspond with the correct pins in our board. So we don't want to force these cables in there. If it doesn't feel like it's fitting, check the orientation of your cable. Make sure it's not flipped up, upside down um, because they are actually different shaped pins. There are uh, square pins that are used to al help align this cable into the correct orientation. And we don't want to mess that up um, because we'll obviously be getting, getting improper voltages and we can destroy our motherboard by having that in the incorrect, by trying to force that in the incorrect way. So again, computers are delicate, or especially our motherboard can be uh, extremely delicate, and we never want to just force things in. Uh, we don't want to force those puzzle pieces. We want to make sure that they're going in easily and maybe a little bit of pressure in order to push things into place, but we don't want to ever force things in because we, we know, quote unquote, that it fits there. It just doesn't seem like it's fitting there. It's not a puzzle piece that was cut wrong. We want to check and make sure that that's actually the piece that goes there. As we move on from our actual 20 pin connectors on our board, we want to start talking out now about our SATA connectors. Now our SATA connectors, as we see here, are going to be a 15 pin power connector, which have cables for 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 12 volts in our ground. And these are used for powering hard drives, optical drives, and they're what provide our power to... Usually our, new, our SATA hard drives are going to have these... SATA connectors here. As we see here, we have our SATA hard drive and this SATA connector, our SATA power here. Make sure it's in the correct orientation and we just plug it right into our SATA hard drive. Sometimes we may run into an instance where we don't have the correct type of connector. We don't have that correct SATA connector and we can actually get Molex, say Molex to SATA power converters. Um, they're just small, small connectors that have a Molex on one end, SATA on the other. We plug the Molex into our Molex power and it gives us an extra SATA or we have a SATA to Molex converter. Um, whichever we need in that particular situation, uh, we just want to make sure that um, when we're buying the power supply unit, if possible, we predetermine which connectors we need and just make sure it has that standard on our cables. We mentioned Molex a second ago and we're going to now check out our Molex connector coming from this power supply unit. Our Molex connector is actually a 4-pin connector here, whereas our SATA connector was a 15-pin flat connector, 
Our Molex is a larger, more blocky four pin connector that will more commonly be seeing used on our PETA IDE hard drives. We're not going to have that SATA connection in there. We're going to be using a Molex power into those types of hard drives. These are also seen, again, on older optical drives that we may have. We'll see them on some of our case fans that we place in. Depending on how new the hard drives or the optical drives are, or depending on which model that we purchased, our SATA, either our SATA connectors or our Molex connectors are going to be two of the most commonly, the most popular connectors that we'll see uh, assisting us in connecting those external, those external features or those internal fans or internal hard drives.